Abacoder. As you might have guessed by now, in this lesson we're going to practice the foreign keys in PostgreSQL, what they are and how they work. Now imagine that our company has decided to participate in bike to work scheme. That means that employees could have a bike if they want to travel to work by bike. Now there are certain conditions though. First of all, one employee could only have one bike, not more than one. One bike can only belong to one employee, no sharing. A bike would be the only option available but employee could decide to skip the schema if he or she doesn't know how to ride a bike, for instance. So we're going to have two tables. One is for employees and the other is for bicycles. So we need to assign bicycles to employees. And the naive way to do that is just to have a one big table where employee fields are going to be mixed in with fields for bicycles. But this is a bad choice because, as you can see, we have some fields for bicycles marked with not null condition. And this violates the bicycle schema conditions because an employee must have an option to actually not participate in that schema. But this architecture leaves us with no choice. So I wonder if there is more flexible way to do it. For instance, what if we could reference the values in some other schema and pull them in as we need them. And this is where foreign keys come in handy because they allow us to reference some other tables. For instance, we can connect our employee table and a table called bicycle. This way, all three conditions of the bicycle schema would be satisfied. So let's have a look how can we implement that in Postgres. So first of all, we need to create that table called bicycles and we need to fill it in with some data. So we type create table bicycle and then in the brackets, we specify the fields. So ID of type big serial. So we want it to be self incrementing then condition not null and it's going to be our primary key. Then we have make of type voucher and a maximum number of characters in that field would be 100 and it also going to be not null. After that we're going to have a field called type so the type of the of a basicle and it's going to be of a type voucher as well 100 and not null. And the last field is going to be called price. So it's going to be of type numeric with precision of 19 and scale of 2. And it's going to be not null as well. All right, so let's create that table and have a look how it looks. So backslash D. And you can see that bicycle is added to the list of our tables. All right, and now as we have this table, we can create a foreign key in employee to reference the primary key of the bicycle table. So as you can see, we have some constraints already. As you can remember, this is to check the uniqueness of email and whether the gender is female or male. And now we're going to add the foreign key. So we type alter table employee add bicycle ID. That will be our name of the foreign key and type is going to be begin. So self increasing and then references. So which field in which table is going to reference in our case is going to be the table called bicycle and the field ID success. And now we can see that we have a last field called bicycle ID of type begin and that is our foreign key that references primary key ID in a 
bicycle table. Now, in order to satisfy another condition, we must add a constraint of type unique for our foreign key. That will make sure that our employee can only have one bicycle. So the table was altered, but let's have a look once again. Backslash D, employee. And as you can see, we have bicycle ID not only as a foreign key, but as unique constraint as well, together with an email. And now the time has come to fill our table bicycle with the data. As you might remember, in one of our previous lessons, I've been using a service called Mockaroo that randomly generates the data and helps us to populate the table. So I was able to populate the table with thousand records in absolutely no time. Now I'm going to show you how long does it take to populate the table manually with just three records. So I'm going to manually type insert into the table name bicycle. Columns are going to be make, type and price. And the values are going to be, oh, I took them from Google. Um, it's in the ATB of type mountain bike. And the price is a hundred, um, let's say, pound sterling. The next one is going to be Apollo Cafe. And it's a ladies hybrid bike and it's slightly more expensive 160 pounds and the last one is a special bike for a special audience I would imagine so it's called Brompton and it's a folding bike with a price of thousand and forty five pounds now let's check them out we are going to perform select all from bicycle table and as you can see here they are so we can start issuing them to our employees so let's grab first 10 employees from our table to do that we're going to type select all from employee and limit would be 10 and it starts with ID of 4 because as you might have guessed ID 1 2 3 were either deleted in the previous lessons or modified but it doesn't really matter so Lisa is going to be our first lucky employee to get a women hybrid bike called Apollo Cafe absolutely for free so in order to assign that bike to Lisa we need to type update our table employee and then the keyword set so we're gonna set the foreign key bicycle ID to the ID of two which corresponds to Apollo Cafe in the table called Bicycles and the condition where ID equals four, that means Lisa. Let's check this out. Now, as soon as you modify a record, it's gonna be moved to the back of the table. So in order to select precisely Lisa, we'll need to add the condition where ID equals four. And as you can see, the very last column is an ID of two, which corresponds to the ladies bike in our bike table. And that's all about foreign keys for now. In the next lesson, we're going to learn how to use them to perform joins. Now, please give this video an Empress thumbs up, toll the bell and subscribe. That was V. Thank you and I'll see you on the next lesson. Bye.